Championship got underway today. Cork facing Limerick in Parky Keeve with Clare on the Paddy O'Shea taking on Waterford. Our first report is from Evandy Killen. Limerick came into this Munster Championship match looking for a repeat performance of the 2003 meeting when Cork came out on the wrong side of a 10-point margin. Manager Mickey Ned O'Sullivan was keen to stress the confidence within the camp. The players have worked exceptionally hard in the build-up and uh, I think they're very, very confident. They're looking forward to the challenge. Uh, to, the time is nearly there now and uh, there's nothing for us to do only leave them at it. It's down to the 30 players on the field and the 15 that wanted more I think will win it. And it was the 15 in green that started on top. Corner forward John Cook putting them in front just seconds from the throw-in. Pa Ranahan added a second but on both occasions James Masters had equalised within minutes. Fitting then that he be the man to give them the lead. The goal was set up by Derek Kavanagh. Masters cool as ever up front. Limerick stayed in touch thanks to the boot of Michal Reedy, but John Cook's shot here could have levelled it. Alan Quirk did well to deny the goal. What followed was a drought of scores lasting almost 20 minutes. Cork were creating chances but failed to convert on seven occasions. This the most glaring error. Masters set up Nicholas Murphy, but the concentration dipped and the ball skidded wide. Billy Morgan's side made amends five minutes from the break though. Pierce O'Neill linking up with Masters here. And just before the whistle, Noel O'Leary made a run from the half-back line. He wasn't picked up by the Limerick defenders, so it was left for Sean Kiley to save. The rebound wasn't gathered either, and O'Leary fisted it to the back of the net. Cork led by 2-4 to 5 points at half-time. The impact of O'Leary's first half goal was evident in a more confident, clinical second half display by Cork. Masters adding his sixth score almost immediately. The effect it had on Limerick was quite the opposite. The Treaty men would only score twice in the second half, the first of two frees here by Michal Reedy. Sean Kiley denied Anthony Lynch a goal five minutes in, but Cork didn't delay in creating more scoring opportunities. Michael Cousin taking full advantage of his height here to set up centre-back Ger Spillane. Cousin's next move wasn't as impressive. It had Kieran Donaghy written all over it. Masters the creator yet again. Cousin will be disappointed with that finish, the first of three wides for the day. Meanwhile, Michal Reedy's free 15 minutes into the second half will be the last contribution by Mickey Ned O'Sullivan's men. They trailed 2-7 to 7 points. Corner forward, Donnick O'Connor and substitute Kevin O'Sullivan added two points apiece and Nicholas Murphy opened his account. Limerick simply couldn't get into a rhythm, Shawnee Buckley adding to their tally of seven wides here. So although the treaty men had fewer wides in the day, they had far fewer scores too. Anthony Lynch set up centre forward Pierce O'Neill five minutes from time for the last score of the game. A comprehensive win for Cork, but a poor spectacle overall. It's back to the drawing board for Limerick, and Cork advanced to a semi-final meeting with Tipperary on the 3rd of June. Final score, Porky Creeve, Cork 2-14, Limerick 7 points. I think probably the positives are the first half performance, we took all the wrong options, you know. But as I said, there's a few new lads in, and you know, it's just getting used to championship again, you know what I mean? And uh, the second half, I think when Noel got the goal, he kind of, you know, lifted, you know, lifted the crowd, I suppose, and lifted the team, and then... Um, and then we started playing the football that we can play, you know, they were a lot more composed and we're taking the right options instead of the wrong options, which we did in the first half, you know.